I am slowly losing my mind. All right, a little context for this video. Uh, this is the pen I'm working, well, it's the body of the pen I'm working on. Um, and I'm wanting to get this tip threading on to this body, cross-eyed being so close to my face, uh, nicely. It's threading on beautifully now, um, but I was having nothing but difficulty all week trying to figure out why I couldn't get my threads. I would always mangle threads, and I thought I'd solve that issue weeks ago. Uh, turned out I just got lucky weeks ago. So in this video, we finally figured out, we set it all up prop properly, and uh, now I got threaded tips that I'm very happy with. I'm having issues with threading on the silly... Titanium threading? Perfect, not an issue. Stainless threading? Giving me troubles. No idea why. I think, I think, I think, the stainless might just be more difficult to cut through, enough so that it's putting more pressure on the tool and this stepper motor can barely keep up to the speed because I can't spin any slower to do the threading. I'm wondering if I'm losing synchronization at some point. So what I'm gonna do is I cut a very small, I'll, I'll show you in a second. I'll put better footage in here. I cut a little groove into this piece that I was gonna thread, now it's my scrap piece. Uh, and I'm gonna run the threading op way out on the other side of the lathe through its full operation. And I'm gonna come back to that spot where the machine says zero is. It's a massive offset just so I'm cutting air. But, and I wanna see if I come back to that exact same spot. Then I'm gonna do the same thing, cutting the material with a zero point and check it again and see if there's difference. If there's a difference between that, then I know that it's the material that's losing synchronization. If it comes back to the same zero, I'm not losing any Z steps and it's something else. So we'll see. Hmm. So the air cutting worked perfectly. I started at zero. I did a bunch of air cutting. I actually ran it twice because I forgot to record it the first time. Bang on zero. So I'm not losing steps air cutting. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing, cutting the stainless. And, uh, even though it's probably gonna mangle the threads, I'm gonna come back and see if my zero's the same. And if my zero's the same, I'm not losing steps, I'm losing synchronization. And I think I might know why it's doing that. So let's hope that's the answer, because that's the easy one to fix. So we just ran that same test that we were cutting in air, except this time we cut it, the threads here, you can see they're gross. Thankfully it messed up like a bunch of times while we were cutting it. But I also made a little cut right here with the threading tool. Um, and I knew that was at negative 0.2 from my offset. And uh, when I went back to it, confirming on the uh, readout, we're exactly at point two. So we're not losing steps. What we're losing is synchronization. And I think I know the cause of that. So here's an interesting conundrum. If you look here on the left screen, uh, there's a light here. I'm monitoring the spindle, um, which should go on and off once every rotation. But if I bring the magnet, the Hall effect sensor right over it, and then just wiggle it back and forth, I can get it to turn on and off. Why is that any kind of importance? The sensor I'm using there is a latching sensor. It should only turn on with magnetic north and then turn off with the magnetic south or vice versa. The fact that I can get it to flip flop with one magnetic field passing by it leads me to believe that when the magnetic field's at a certain angle, it's catching a bit of the south pole, which is triggering the, uh, the sensor to latch one way or another, which could mean that when it's spinning, if I'm getting a latch latch, with one magnet pass, it would be messing up my index, possibly by a whole rotation, possibly by more, I don't know. So I think that's my issue. I think.
I don't have an easy way to fix it. Right now. I gotta think on this one. I figured it out. I don't know up to this point how I was ever able to do dependable threading because there should be no way that I was able to. Uh, this Hall Effect sensor, which measures the index, uh, without getting into the nitty gritty details, uh, this thing detects a speed, a little photo sensor, sees these little black lines going past, tells it how fast the spindle is spinning. Uh, and there's magnets on either side that tell this, this uh, tell the computer when the spindle's at a certain position. Because you have to know when the start, like oh, when the 360 rotation, you have to know it's zero degrees every time to do threading. This magnetic sensor was mounted on top of a stepper motor, which generates a magnetic field, and it was also way too close to the magnets. Uh, so I was getting a bunch of noise, a bunch of all kinds of erroneous signals that I was able to see yesterday on the computer screen when I could wiggle this past and see it flipping, flopping. Um, moving the magnet away, or moving the sensor away from the motor, I'm assuming helped a bunch, and moving it away from the magnets helped a bunch. I ran like, I don't know, a hundred tests last night, um, and I wasn't able to get a single error. Every single thread was perfect, no matter with the material, no matter anything. It was just, everything was perfect. That is my problem, 100%. I can no, now no longer get it to fault on the screen. Uh, so however I was able to do threading in the past, it was pure luck uh, that I just didn't get any noise during that cycle. So I'm happy that I fixed it. Yay! That's the thing when doing stuff like this. Most of it is not just doing it. It's like 90% of it is just finding problems and fixing them. That's like that's like 90% of the barriers of building anything is just coming across things you don't understand why, and then sourcing them out. That's the only time you ever want to give up. When things are going well, you don't want to give up. It's just when you run into problems that you pound your head against a wall. That's what makes you want to give up. But when you figure it out, you feel amazing. So I'm so happy that I got this working. Threading issue is solved. I am super happy with this. I also tried doing a little bit of curving instead of a chamfer for the tip, just Trying something different. But those threads are the bomb. I'm so happy with how that goes together. All the tolerances are nice. A little chamfer in the middle here, meet up nice. When I spin this, it's ultra concentric. I mean, the tip still needs a little bit of polishing and work. I'm probably going to increase the taper too. It's a little. A little stubby for my liking, but uh, I quite like that. Unfortunately, this tip is actually a little bit too small. I read my drawing wrong. Um, the one part that I have to do manually, uh, I read that wrong and I, I cut it. It's about 50 thou too small, so. Another test piece. Thankfully, uh, with the old magic of CNC, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to do another one. I can just uh, pop another piece of stock in and hit go and uh, comes out like that. So that's awesome. That's awesome, because uh, doing it by hand, it's a lot of work to, to make that. It's not like it's not a lot of work to do at CNC either. Um, for anybody doing CNC where people just think they're magic machines and you just put parts in, hit go, and parts come out. Not the case. There is so much work that goes into setting something up properly for CNC work. And then once it is working, it works for a while until tools start, start to dull or things shift or materials change. or like It's not just a one and go. Anyways. Very happy with that. Very, very happy with that. In other news, the honeycomb from my laser cutter came in, uh, so I got that put in place. I was, the, the bed I had built for it worked, it was just uneven, so that's why I wanted to replace it. And along with cutting this soft shipping foam, uh, another thing I was experimenting with is cutting uh, this material. So this stuff is called um, chipboard. It's like, it's like really thick cardboard. Um, it's dirt cheap, and I wanted to be able to do little tags for each pen I sell um, that'll come with the pen that'll say the serial number of serial number and model of the pen uh, so I came up with these little things which is just a piece of that chipboard um, but I wanted to make it like three-dimensional and whatnot so uh, this is this is cut through on this side and then there's also just another piece of cardstock or chipboard uh, on the back and then uh, this one I actually just sharpied it so it was black um, I did another one with uh, white and this one just has a just white um, cardstock on the back. Just trying different different methods to see what I like. Uh, and that worked really well. The only problem was that when I was doing it, um, here's a sample piece and you can see 
that I've cut through in some parts for the um, where the QR code was burned in. And the reason that happened is uh, it was in and out of the focal range. So basically when the laser is out of focus, it's less effective at cutting. But when you get right into focus, it's very effective at cutting. So if that sheet, wherever I focused, let's say that QR code was positioned somewhere else in the sheet, that might be in the exact focal range or outside of it or one way or another. Um, so if you crank up the laser power to get the desired effect and you're outside of focal range and you drop into it, it works better and you burn through. Um, so everything has to be very, very flat. And the easiest way to solve that was just use honeycomb. Uh, I put some of the alum aluminum angles all around it just so that when I put material on, uh, conveniently, these sheets also come in 12 by 12. Uh, that's what my shipping foam comes in. So that's what the whole machine is sized for. Um, it's just super easy to butt everything up to the corner and just let it rip. So I haven't even ran it yet with the new bed. Uh, I'm super excited to see how it works out because uh, cutting these little cards with my wiggly woggly bed was not... Uh, not as easy as I wanted it to be. I mean, my laser cutter, I, I, I want to treat it like a printer. Basically, I send files to it and it prints. And uh, to do that, I have to have it mechanically set up really well. So the new bed should be primo for that. And that takes us to about now, um, when I'm going to start this whole recording cycle again for next week's videos. Uh, one thing I do have, or one thing I'm working on. So I got this big, giant rod of aluminum. Um, bar of aluminum uh, and that's gonna I'm gonna cut this up into pieces and we're gonna make soft jaws for my little vise on my mill I actually have some other sneaky ideas where I think I'm gonna use my mill to do a little bit of mill turning as well as my lathe to do CNC turning they'll be turning and milling everywhere uh, but that's basically what I'm gonna work on next that's the end of this video thank you so much for watching I'll see you guys next time take care bye